got your Bible, turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 19, Psalm 19, and just buckle your seat belt, and uh, it'll, let's stand, this will help you to have a little rest for your pew if I preach long, don't want you to fall out of the third loft like one of Paul's listeners did, he fell out, didn't he, yeah. Paul preached long, y'all folks wouldn't like to hurt Paul, he preached too long. Long-winded preacher, yeah. Bible says in Psalm 19:9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. What about that? Psalm 110, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you want wisdom, begin to fear of God. Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. People think they got knowledge. They haven't really got any knowledge till they begin to fear of God. The Bible said, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Get a hold of the knowledge of the holy, the holy God of heaven. I'm glad I know a little bit about him, amen. Job chapter 28 and verse 28, behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil, that is understanding. Let us pray. Father, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a joy to be among God's people. It's a joy to hear the saints of God sing the wonderful songs of the Lord. We just want to ask you to bless our fellowship today. Bless the word of God as it comes forth. Give liberty, give unction, give power, convict and save and bring home and do whatever needs to be done in the hearts of your people. And we'll say thank you and blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you today upon the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. Well, people fear many things. People fear all kind of things. Some people fear the dark, and some people, they fear, uh, you know, the daylight when it's going to come. They fear the light. Some people are afraid of snakes and spiders, and uh, a lot of folks are afraid of heights. Uh, Miss, uh, well, I won't tell you her name, but she said, I'd like to go to California, but said, uh, I'm afraid to go. I said, well, jump on that big old bird and you'll be there in just a little bit. She said, oh, I won't. I'm afraid to go on that big bird. But, hey, a lot of folks are afraid of heights. But it's a beautiful thing when you get up there above the clouds, look down the old planted earth, and you see about all you can see is the rivers and the roads. And you can't see much other. Even mountains look little, don't they? They sure do. A lot of people are afraid of depths. A lot of folks are afraid of sickness. They're afraid of cancer. They're afraid of heart trouble. They're afraid of... Alzheimer's. Some people are afraid of failure, afraid they will fail, and of course a lot of people are afraid of losing their jobs, and they're afraid of death, and they're afraid of criticism, and they're afraid of old age, and they're afraid of loneliness, just all kinds of things. But listen to what Job said in Job chapter 3, verse 25, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I, I was afraid of of is come upon me. Whatever you're afraid of, that's what's going to come upon you. You say, what can I do, preacher? Fear him. Fear God, leave it all up to him. He knows your life. The Bible said again in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 24, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. The fear of the wicked, it's going to come upon him. So we need to fear God, don't we? Put him first of all in your life. Fear the Lord. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, the fear of the Lord. First of all, the fear of the Lord must be taught. You say, preacher, you're crazy. Well, if I'm crazy, the word of God's crazy because I believe in preaching the word of God, right? The Bible said in Psalm 34, 11, Come ye children, come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Now what about that? There's a call to come to him, and I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 14, Gather uh, me the people together that I may make them hear thy words or hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth that they may teach their children. God wants us to hear and he wants us to learn. Listen, what the Bible said in the book of Deuteronomy, it says it about four or five times. Deuteronomy 13, 11, it says, Hear and learn, hear and fear. In Deuteronomy 17, 13, the Bible says to hear and to fear. The Bible said in 19, 20, uh, the Bible said to hear and to fear. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 21, 21, 
hear and fear. We are to learn. It must be taught. Again, Deuteronomy 31, 12, the Bible said, Gather the men and the women, the children, and thy strangers. Gather them all. Gather, gather the men, gather the women, gather the children, gather the strangers. He wants everybody to hear the word of God. He wants everybody to hear. He wants everybody to hear. He just don't want some people to hear. He wants everybody to hear. And listen to what the Bible says. That they may hear and learn and fear and may observe to do all the words of this law. God wants us to keep his word. Amen. Amen. It must be taught. It must be taught. And then, number two, for fear, the Lord must be chosen. It must be chosen. The Bible said in Proverbs 129, for that they hated the knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They didn't choose the fear of the Lord. You've got to choose the fear of the Lord. Hey, I don't know about you. I choose to fear God Almighty. Brother, I do fear him, don't you? Yes, sir, I've seen the chastened hand of God. I've seen the hand of judgment. I know God is a God to be feared. He's a holy God. He's a God of judgment, and so he's a God to be feared. Listen to what the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 65 and verse number 12. Because when I called... Ye did not answer, and when I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Hey, they chose what God delighted not in. God wants us to choose his fear. He wants us to choose his way. He wants us to choose righteousness. Oh, brother, we got to do it. We got to do it. We got to choose him. We got to choose the fear of the Lord. Hey, don't run from him. Run to him. Hey, you say, I'm afraid to go to God. I'm afraid what God will do. Well, you better be afraid of what he'll do if you run away from him. You know, they used to say some, I never did run from mom and daddy. I just took the whipping that they gave me. But, you know, a lot of kids, they'd run away from the parents and they'd say, I'm going to give you twice as much. If you run away, I'm going to give you twice as much. And that's the way it is. If you run from God Almighty, you're going to get twice as much. And so just run to him. Amen. And then, of course, <coughs> excuse me, you must, uh, the fear of the Lord must be understood. How do, we understood. How do we understand the fear of the Lord? It is by seeking wisdom. Listen to what the Bible said in Proverbs 2, 4 and 5. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as a hidden treasure, search for like silver, like a hidden treasure. My brother used to hunt for gold. <laughs> I said, Dimmer, you'll find more gold in the house of God than you'll ever find out on them mountains. Taking that old, uh, you know, metal finder, gold finder, whatever it was he used. I said, you'll find more gold in the house of God. You'll find the real gold. You'll find what is real, not something that will pass away, something that don't mean a whole lot. So, hey, he said to seek the wisdom of God, seek the fear of God like you'd seek silver, like you'd seek um, a hidden treasure. And so, hey, that's what we need to do. And so, hey, it is uh, to be chosen. It is to be understood. We understand the fear of the Lord. If you got it, brother, you'll understand it. If you don't have it, you don't understand, do you? Then I want to say number four, the fear of the Lord says sin must be hated. It must be hated. You say, do I have to hate sin? The Bible said in Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate to hate. Hey, there's some things we need to hate, right? We need to hate evil. We need to hate pride. We need to hate arrogance. We need to hate the evil way. We need to hate the forward tongue. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. I didn't write the Bible. I just read it, believe it, and preach it. Amen. And you're to receive it. You're to believe it. Yes, sir. Proverbs 16, 6, the Bible said, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Hey, if that don't make you depart from evil, there ain't nothing will make you depart from evil. When you fear God, brother, you're afraid to sin against him. You're afraid to disobey him. Is that true in your life? Hey, hey, it better be. It better be, better be, better be. Hey, and then I want to say number five, the fear of the Lord is a must for great things in your life. You say, preach, you must be crazy. The fear of the Lord is a must for great things in your life. Listen to what the Bible says. Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. That men that rule and judge were to be men that fear God. 
if, hey, these people that don't fear God, they don't need to hold an office. I don't care how, what kind of office it is. A man that does not fear God Almighty or a woman that does not fear God Almighty should not have an elected office of any kind. And if they don't believe that Bible, don't elect them, don't vote for them. Hey, hey, y'all still out there? This world's gone pale male crazy. After Michael Yousef went off this morning, they had another preacher, Alan Jackson. You ever heard of him? You've heard of Alan Jackson, a country singer, but this is Alan Jackson, the preacher. And he had this fella on that uh, after they came out of, uh, what was it, Pakistan, Afghanistan, he goes in there and gets them people that was left that should have been brought out. And he said them people were more concerned about elections than we are. Now what about that? They are more concerned in other countries about the election than we are. Shame on Christians that they're not concerned. We better be concerned or we're going to be under Marxism. We're going to be a Cuba. Should I get on going or not? They had a congressman on from Florida. Did y'all see it? I think it was on Fox News. A congressman, I think he came from Cuba. He had a he had a Spanish name. And he said, Miss Kamala's daddy was a professor, but he's a Marxist. Guess where she gets her information from? And so, hey, brother, we gotta hate sin. We gotta stand on the righteousness of God. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil, they depart from sin. And if you don't fear God, you'll live in sin. Well, let me go on. I jumped the gun just a little bit here. The Bible said the men who rule and judge are men to fear God, men of truth, men who hate covetousness, hating covetousness. That means they just keep on hating it. Proverbs chapter number 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear through, the people mourn. You agree with that? Say amen. If you don't agree with that, say, oh me. Brother, how true that is. Brother, we've mourned a few days in this United States of America. We've mourned, haven't we? We've mourned. We've mourned. Why? Because the right folks wasn't up there guiding the the boat. Hey, we need the right man at the helm. Yes, sir. And not only so that I'm talking about the fear of the Lord is a must for great things. If you're going to be up and be in politics and be a ruler or a judge, you better fear God. And but number two, and if you want to go to heaven, you got to fear God Almighty. You want to go to heaven? How many want to go to heaven? Let's see your hand. How many has got that ticket to go? Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's going to be something, brother, one day to walk down the streets and go look at the face of God the Father and God the Son and know that we've been redeemed. As she's saying, we're redeemed. Thank God. I think we ought to just stick our hands up and say, thank you, Lord, I'm redeemed. I've been redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. What a blessing, what a blessing. Glory to God. We ought to just turn some or sort it to because how great he is. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. And then I, let me talk to you just a few minutes about some people who feared God. When you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it goes down the list. All them folks. There's Abel, there's Seth, there's Enoch, there's Noah. The Bible said, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen as yet move with fear. Move with fear. God said, I want you to be on the ark there. Come on, to destroy the whole world. I'm going to flood this world. i never been a flood. Never rained like that. But God said, I'm going to flood this world. Oh, no, brother, he feared God. He started a sawing and a hammering, and he started building that ark. What, what God told him to do. There's old Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's Joseph. There's Moses. The Moses, the Bible said as he stood at the foot of Mount Sinai, that old mountain, that old mountain was a dancing with the power of God and smoke on it and lightning and a flashing and everything had taken place. The Bible said it's so fear from my knees begin to tremble. I mean, even Moses had walked with God and been with God was a trembling. 
He saw the judgment of God Almighty. He saw how great God is. Hey, you can't even imagine how great God is. We think we can. They've never found all the stars in the universe. They take the biggest telescopes and they look out there as far as they can. And as far as they can go, they stars galore. Millions and trillions of stars out there. And guess what? He made them all. And guess what? He knows all of my name. <laughs> What a God we got, brother. What a God we got. He's a mighty God. Yes, sir. And Moses, he trembled and feared God Almighty. Oh, Elijah, he feared God. Obadiah, when uh, he was looking for Elijah, and uh, he, uh, he uh, Elijah told Obadiah, said, go tell the king, Elijah is here. And he said, oh, if I do and you disappear, said, he'll kill me. Said, I fear God. Said, hadn't you heard what I've done? I've hid some of the prophets of God and fed them while this uh, famine is going on because he is wanting to get all of the prophets of God and kill them and said, I fear God. So Obadiah feared God. The Bible said Job feared God. Hezekiah feared God. Old Jonah said, I fear God. That's just a few. Brother, men feared God Almighty. Let me pass on number seven right quick and say the benefits of fearing God. What are the benefits of fearing God? Well, let me just read a few scriptures and show you the benefits. You'd like to know the benefits, right? What's the benefits if I buy this? Uh, you know, they are always trying to sell you these times, yours. My advice to you, run like crazy. And don't even look back. <laughs> run like your shirt tail's on fire. <laughs> you know, they'll say, uh, come and uh, you can win this and win that and win the other, you know. Give us about 30 minutes of your time. It turns out to be two or three hours. And they're putting the pressure on your screw and screwing the, you know, the screw down on you. You need this. You need this. What benefit is that for me? Well, I only give you the benefits of fearing God Almighty. The Bible said in Psalm 25, 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Hey, the secret of God is with us. Because we fear him, he'll show us his covenant. He shows us his word. He opens the scriptures to us and we understand, we understand. These people that's deceived, you know what? They don't know the Lord. People that's deceived don't know the Lord. As I preached about deception, there's deception on every hand and people are being deceived. They're just as gullible as they can. They're just like that old fish. And I've told you, we went up to Ortman farm and we went, you know, there's a bridge across the river and we get on the bridge and we could look down and see them old hog suckers. They're about that long, some of them about that long. We'd drop a line right down in front of them, that old hog sucker. He, you know, they, they call them hog suckers because they suck their the prey in, you know, they suck them worms in and we just drop it right down in front of them and just keep moving it over there and after a while <laughs> they grab it and we had them. That's the way the devil does. He deceives folks, don't he? He sure does. He deceives people. And the Bible said, The seek of the Lord is with them that fear him. Again, Psalm 33, 18, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Aren't you glad that God sees us? We sing that old song, There's an all-seeing eye that's watching you. He watches everything we do. He, he's got his eye on us. Praise God. He sees the danger coming, and he knows how to take care of us. He's got his eye on us. Hey, isn't that beautiful? I told you when I drove the school bus, there's this grandma, she stood out on the porch every morning. I mean, if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's cold as we is, she was standing on that porch and she'd watch that granddaughter get on the bus and disappear out of sight before she went back in. She kept an eye on that little granddaughter. Hey, God's got his eye on you and me. Hallelujah. Can we shout a while? Can we praise him? Thanks be unto God. The Bible said in Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivers them. Praise God. He's not only camping around about us, but he's delivering us. As Psalm 34, 9, there is no want to them that fear the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Brother, I don't, hey, we're not going to lack when we serve God and we fear him. Brother, we're not going to have any lack. He's going to take care of us. He's going to feed us. Hey, if he has to send the ravens to feed us, he can. If he has to rain bread out of heaven, he will. If he has to open the rock and give us water to drink, he will. 
hey, there's no lack and there's no smallness in there. God, it's all big. God is a big God. Yes, sirree. The Bible says, again, Psalm 103, verse 11, for as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. How many is rode an airplane? Let's see your hand. That's pretty well, most of that. Put your hand down. How many has never rode an airplane? There's two little boys up here. There's some little kids back there. There's Tommy, he never has. Wasn't that a thrill? There's Mike, he never has. Y'all need to take a ride. <laughs> I was working down in Miami, Florida with a telephone company and uh, and Carolyn had a miscarriage and I need to come home and I got on that big old plane. It's a four-motor job. I forgot what they call it, DC-9 or something. Anyway, it had four motors, four jet motors. It wasn't, it wasn't loaded. It wasn't, it wasn't crowded. I was on a seat by myself, and I was sitting by the window. And that bug, you know, whether they do at the end of the runway, they'll roll, roll that motor, and then they'll turn down brakes loose, zoom down the runway you go. Zoom, the ground falls out from Monday. And man, in just a minute, you're looking down on the world. What a thrill. <laughs> hey, brother, I'm telling you, it's going to be something. The Bible said, as high as the heavens is above the earth, so is his mercy toward them that fear him. What about that? Again, the Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 13, that like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. How many has got children? That's pretty, pretty well most of you. You ever pity your children? You ever feel pity for them? You ever feel love for them? I remember when uh, Sherry had to go to be operated on. The kid slammed the door on her. A big old pump knock came up on her head, big as a hen egg, or bigger almost, I guess. And they put her on that gurney and headed her down toward the operating room. That makes you pity your children. You kind of know what the Lord is saying. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. <laughs> I'm talking about the benefits, boy. These benefits, these are wonderful benefits, ain't they? Again, Psalm 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. It's from everlasting to everlasting. What about that? Psalm 115, 11. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. For he is their help and their shield. He is a present help in the time of trouble. Hey, God's not 10,000 trillion miles out of the He's a present help, brother. He's right beside you. He's right there to help you. Psalm 145, 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. He'll fulfill your desire. He'll hear you when you cry, when you pray, and he'll save you out of your troubles. He'll save you. Psalm 147, 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. In those who hope in his mercy, he takes pleasure in them that fear him. Is these people that you take pleasure in being around. And then there's some you take pleasure in not being around. <laughs> right? Some folks you like to be around and some folks you can take it and leave it, you know. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? The Lord takes pleasure in them that fear him. He likes to be around you. You say, well, I thought he always, well, he is. But he takes pleasure in the life you're living. Hey, don't you want the Lord to take pleasure in you? The life you're living? Oh, uh, yes. The Bible said, Luke chapter 1 verse 50, His mercy is on them that fear Him from generation to generation. I'll say more about that generation in a few minutes, but from generation to generation. The Bible said in Proverbs 10, 27, The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. But the wicked, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. He prolongs the days of them that fear him. How many want to live long? How many like to live to be a hundred? A lot of you would. I don't want to live to be a hundred if I don't have my mind. If I don't have any health, I'd just rather, uh, when my health is gone, I'd rather just say, Lord, I'm ready to come home, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm talking about the benefits. That's some of the benefits. Okay, let me, I want to give you a pressing question. 
If I remember right, this is number eight, a pressing question. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 7. Who would not fear thee, O king of nations, for there is none like thee? That's a pressing question. Who would not fear God? Revelation 15, 4. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for the high judgments are made manifest. Who would not fear God? Man, I tell you what, I'm glad as a little old boy I, I began to fear God Almighty. Well, I can tell you this, number nine, you don't fear God if, if you lie, if you cheat, if you steal, if you kill, if you commit adultery, if you commit fornication, if you commit sodomy, if you're dealing drugs and alcohol, if you curse, if you're effeminate, except you repent. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to repent of those things. If you have abortion for the wrong reason. I, I believe in abortion on, for two things. And I think Trump believes this too. Now this is a big issue for the, for the Democrats, right? I believe in abortion on, if it's the life of the mother. I believe in abortion if it's rape. Now, I had some folks up in the mountains there, Mother Church, they said, you mean to tell me you believe in abortion if it's rape? Yeah, because the Bible said you're to put that rapist to death. Except the mother knows the person that raped her and wants to keep the baby. I think that's the only two reasons why you should have abortion. Right? Y'all there? Were you agree with me or not? That's what I believe. And I, I think Trump believes that. Well, that's good. But they're going to jump up and down on this thing. But let me just take you to this thing about generations. He said the mercy of God is upon them from generation to generation that fear him. The Bible talks about the generations. It talks about the generation of Adam. It talks about the generation of Noah. It talks about the generations of <coughs> his sons, Shem, Ham, and Jatham. It talks about the generation of Shem. It talks about the generation of Tara, which was the father of Abraham. It talks about the uh, generation of Ishmael, of Isaac, of Esau, of Jacob. It talks about the generations. Generation must be pretty important because of the Bible talking about all these generations. It must be pretty important, right? Well, you know what? When you abort a baby, you destroyed your generations. And I took the time to just sit down and figure again. In five generations, when you have an abortion, upon the grounds of, it's figured upon the grounds of having two children. Sixty, let's see how many I came up with. Sixty-four souls have been destroyed. Sixty souls that have been put to death through that first abortion. In five generations. You ain't got no generations when you abort down babies. You shut down the generation. You don't have any. Unless you have some more kids. But I'm talking about the one you aborted. If that one you aborted had two, and then they had two, and so you doubled it every time, and it comes out in five generations, 64 souls that you've destroyed, 64 in generations that you've destroyed. And so, hey, you think people like that's going to heaven if they don't repent? Now, I know a lot of women, when they have abortions, I mean, they have a psychological problems. They have emotional problems, and, and they regret it. And I'm sure God is a forgiving God. But just don't do it. Don't do it, right? Don't do it because that's taking you down the wrong road. Hey, if you don't never give your heart to Christ, if you never live for Christ, if you never follow Christ, if you never f love Christ, if you never uh, serve Christ, then friend, you don't have the fear of God. Number 10, why ought you to fear God anyway? Why should you fear God? The Bible says Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, fear not them which kill the body. 
Yeah, we do fear people. We, we don't want to get shot. We don't want to get knifed. I just heard it on the news. It's talking about that boy. That used to he used to play on I think uh, Young and Wrestlers or one of them uh, soaps. And uh, I think somebody's trying to steal his car, and he tried to, de you know, to defend that car and uh, and also defend his girlfriend. They shot him, and killed him. Nobody wants that. But hey, don't fear them that can kill your body. Why not? Why not, preacher? How come? But. Hey, you're to, you're to fear him that can uh, destroy both soul and body in hell. Hey, they can't kill your soul. Man can't kill your soul. But God can. Paul said, I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. God's going to keep us, brother. God's going to preserve us. He's going to bring us to that holy city one day in the by and by. He's going to keep us, soul, spirit, and body. Hey, but he said, fear him. That means that the resurrected body is going to be destroyed into the lake of fire one day after a while when they stand before the God of heaven. That's why you ought to fear God. There is a hell to be shone in heaven to gain. Listen what the Bible says in the book of Philippians. There will be a judgment. The Bible said in Philippians 2.10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. But it'll be too late. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue. Every old stubborn, rebellious knee is going to bow and every old cursing, reviling, blaspheming tongue is going to say Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Let me take you to the end of the book of the Revelation. After the great white throne judgment, as far as I can tell, brother, and as far as the Word of God is concerned, not one saved, born again, washed in the blood, child of God is going to stand at that judgment. It'll be the lost that will stand before the great white throne. The Bible said death will give up the dead that are in it, and hell will give up the dead which are in it. Well, what's in hell? The soul and the spirit. What's in death? The body. So it'll be those souls in hell will be brought out of hell and they'll be given a resurrected body of some kind and they'll stand before the great white throne. And listen to what the Bible said. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That is the body and the soul will be cast into the lake of fire. That's why you ought to fear God. Unless you want to spend eternity in outer darkness in the lake of fire, you better fall on your face before God and say, Lord, I do fear you and I'm going to live for you and serve you with all my might. Verse 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whew. Wow. I'm glad I fear God. I fear him, don't you? I fear the chasing hand of God. I don't like God to whip me. Mama, boy, I mean, I didn't like Mama whipping me. As I said so many times, she'd grab a fire shovel, the stove wood, the razor strop, whatever she can get a hold of. And, and when she got done with you, you felt like you need the creek to sit down in to cool off a little bit. Hey, I, I feared Mama, and I fear him. Hey, brother, that'll make you walk right, talk right, spit right, and everything else. <laughs> Listen to what the Bible said, the whole duty of man, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion to the whole matter. Fear God. Fear God. Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That was Solomon in the Old Testament, but let me take you a little farther in the New Testament. We are love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and body, and strength. We are love him with all we are. I'm 
glad I fear him. What about you? The fear of God. There's not much of it in the land today, don't seem like. There's not much of it in Washington, I'm sorry to say. In the communist lands, there's no fear of God. They have killed Christians and tortured Christians and tortured Christians in Russia, in China, North Korea, Venezuela, and Cuba, and those other places. And some people are deceived enough to bring all that here. That's sad, isn't it? Every head bowed, every eye closed, I've given you what God put upon my heart to give to you today. And I thank God for the mercy of God and forgiveness and salvation and for his mercy and fear that he puts within our hearts. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for the word of God. Lord, we know there's so much more in the word of God about the fear of God that we couldn't give these people today, but we gave them what you wanted to be given. Bless it to the hearts of every soul, to these young people, to these kids, Lord, it hurt. Let them fear God. Let them draw out of God. Let them love you and live for you and serve you until the day that you come and take us to heaven. Have your way, Lord, in this invitation in Jesus' name.